Oh, what was that? This is Michael James. I'm your host of Live from the Heartland show this morning. I'm here with our congresswoman from the 9th Congressional District, Jan Schakowsky, and we are talking about uh, many, many things. Uh, Jan, during the break, you and I were talked a little about, we're going to talk about the state, but we want to touch on labor. So let me just tell you this little scene. I was down at the governor's uh, barbecue. Uh, I had a nice talk with him at the house, mostly about the White Sox. The next day, AFSME was out in force at his picnic. It was very sad for me being uh, someone from the left wing of the Democratic Party, active and seeing the governor and labor at odds with each other. Your take on the situation with Democrats and uh, how they're going to deal with labor, who really have supported the party but don't always get that support back. I think it's even more central than, than this, Michael. When we, we were just talking about income inequality in our, in our country, if we go back and think about how was the middle class built in the United States of America, you cannot separate that with the growth of organized labor. People being able to bargain collectively to be able to have incomes that a family could live on. Um, I worry, even with labor now, some of the new contracts um, are driving incomes down in, in our country. The, the sentence that's missing when we talk about income inequality, when we talk about building the middle class, is that we have to proudly, um, boldly talk about supporting the organized labor that we have to have more labor unions in, in our country. And this is true of Democrats as well. Yeah. Um, this um, support for, for labor um, is thought about in terms of who's going to be knocking on, on doors and who's going to be making contributions to campaigns. It is more central to, than that. If we have a disappearance, and, and look, this has been a strategy by the right to cripple labor so that now in the private sector only 7% of the workforce is organized. So now they're going after full bore to public sector unions. And, um, and it's a twofer, of course. If you're able to lower the wages, they, they think, of public sector workers, you know, you don't have to spend so much money, but also you diminish their political power as yep. well in this country. So um, as a labor union, um, not only supporter, but, but member my, myself, um, I, I think we have to have a whole re-education program about the importance of unions, of organized labor into making this country to a place where you can really aspire. You, you know, when we grew up, Michael, you could work in the mills, in, sh in the steel mills, and live a middle class life on one income. Those days, it's like, oh, well, that is so 20th century. You know, we, we can't even expect that. It, that's then, and, and this is a new, a new day. But you know what? You can't even work two or three jobs now and live a middle-class life with health care benefits, with a defined pension, you know, with a, with a, a decent life. Uh, let me ask you a couple more things about the state. And then I, I want to talk a little bit about the future of the Democratic Party. Okay, sure. Uh, on, in the state, uh, we have, uh, we clearly have some issues, but all of a sudden we got Bill Daly talking about running for mayor, I mean, excuse me, for governor. And we have, um, you know, and what do you, just what's your take on the future of the governorship uh, and the legislature with the Madigans, the Dalys, what's going on? Well, Quick I think I think the I think the issue that is really um, everybody's been focusing now, for example, and it gets back to the, our conversation about labor, is this this whole pension issue, the debt that the state has gotten into, and how are we going to look for really progressive solutions here? It doesn't seem like whenever they're talking about it, they always talk about how dire the situation is, but they don't really talk about. Taking it from the corporations more, which they haven't ever done. I mean, it really bothers me that when the workers have done their part and every paycheck have put money into a pension agreement that has been written on paper, and now that those are the people that are going to take the brunt of 
the, uh, of the fact that the state did not contribute to their pensions really bothers me. I understand it's a, it's a big problem. I think labor needs to be at the table. AFSCME needs to be at the table in figuring out a plan. And I absolutely think that we have to look at the corporate sector and, and tax loopholes in figuring out how we're going to close that gap. I mean, we can't just go to the, the, the victims of, of this and say, we want it from you. That's like you know going to Medicare recipients or to the, the, the workers who are paid into the pension fund all yeah, the time. I really hate this. We owe you, but we're never going to pay you kind of notion. And the city, they're trying to do that too. They, there's some to the alderman, I saw a headline. Uh, let me, uh, let's switch over. We're going to run out of time. I think we ought to have a couple hours. Maybe we should stay for the whole day talking I with Jan it. Schakowsky. But uh, one of the things that uh, has really been on mind, my mind lately, and the whole Michigan legislature and their anti-union uh, moves really brought it to my attention was 2014. Jan, you talked earlier about how these Republican uh, states basically and have uh, gerrymandered their districts, as we did in Illinois for the Democrats, to be quite honest. But uh, we have a situation... These are very competitive districts. And uh, <laughs> Go ahead. We, uh, we have... Uh, you know, Democrats got more votes for Congress than the Republicans, but they have the majority in the, in the Congress. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in 2014 and even 2016? I don't see yet, I don't feel yet the urge, the desire, the push from the Democratic Party nationally uh, to go after this, to say what are we going to do, how are we going to position ourselves for 2014 and try to save at least the numbers we've got both in the Senate and the House, etc. Okay, actually, you don't see it because you don't live in those districts. The Democratic Congressional Campaign uh -huh. Committee has already targeted a number of, uh, of the Republicans. We don't have candidates yet, and still, we are beginning to go after them in advertising, in all kinds of grassroots activity, and so that actually is happening. The other thing to note is that the Republican um, House has taken a big hit in terms of public opinion. Um, they are they blamed. Have. They are blamed right now for the uh, for being obstructionists, for stopping common sense solutions, for just saying no, for being radical and out of touch with the American people. The polling is very favorable for for us right now because uh, American people, above all, are really pragmatists. They the the uh, and we were talking. Earlier earlier about the shrinking base of the Republican Party. We are very serious about targeting races that we can win. We have another seat in Illinois. We did very well in Illinois, yeah. but we can pick up at least one more seat in, uh, in, in Illinois. Um, I am optimistic both about the kind of mega atmosphere uh, that affecting the, the races and also the strategic organizing that's going on right now for us as we look at 2014. Jan Schakowsky, I'm going to ask you one more question, and that would be, uh, if I can find it, uh, it basically is upcoming work in, in the Congress, uh, the things that you see as important that you're involved with, and how do you approach being a voice for this progressive district and dealing with the Congress and the country as a whole? Um, I approach being a, a progressive in a, in a couple of ways, both um, as a um, member and part of the executive committee of the Progressive Caucus, which everyone should know is the largest single caucus within the caucus of the Democratic uh, House. Um, and, and so, you know, and, and, and even stronger now after the last election. Good. Yeah. Um, and also doing as much media, including today at the Heartland. Um, <laughs> Um, and on MSNBC and CNN, et cetera, tonight um, um, about um, the issues and from a progressive, uh, a progressive point of view. I, I feel if the president stays resolute that he is representing the views of the American people, the majority, I'm talking about um, the mainstream Americans, want the kinds of policies, don't cut Social Security and Medicare, don't hurt uh, you know poor people and middle class people, ask the rich to pay more. Those are mainstream, overwhelmingly popular ideas. If we 
stay firm, we can win, um, and I think that we can make real progress in these next four years of the Obama administration. And uh, I'm sure you'll agree that uh, the President has said it too, he needs to be pushed from the bottom. And we need to go back to, I think, the, like civil rights, women's movement, anti-war movement, really a lot of serious grassroots organizing, building organizations that will endure over time and will certainly help push the President right well, now. As an organizer, I couldn't agree more, and I I'm, uh, 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 try to be a partner with all of the outside, uh, we call it an inside-outside strategy. That's what we need. Uh, Jan, it's been great having you on the show. Uh, before I forget, I want to thank everybody who makes this show possible. Uh, we have downtown, we have Jay Serrate, sometimes we have Eli Sloan, we have Paul and Mary Wozniak, we have Lisa Herman, Laura, uh, uh, Laura Herman, Lisa Smith, we have Grant Siskel, and we have Lynn Orman helping us out, and sometimes we get uh, Tom Clark helping us too. So, uh, hello there, Katie Hogan. I hope we did good over here. Uh, you've been listening to the Live from the Heartland show, and next week we are going to have uh, someone from uh, Ceasefire, Illinois. And that'll be a great show. And the week after, we're going to do some uh, film talk on uh, family farms. So, uh, Continue to do good in the world because the world needs all the good that you do. Uh, all power to the people. Thank you, Jan Schakowsky, so much. Let's hear it for Jan. Thank you. Over and out. Thank you. And to you, Michael. Thank you. You're listening to 88.7 WLUW, Chicago Sound Alliance, broadcasting.